Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day four of Python for DevOps series and we have successfully completed the first three episodes of this series. We started day one with understanding what exactly Python is, how is it different from shell scripting and why and how DevOps engineers use Python. We also learned how to install and run our very first Python program in just a couple of minutes. After that, we moved towards data types. We understood different types of data types in Python, but we focused more on strings and integer data types. I have also explained a lot of interview questions related to string data types, because in interviews, people ask about string handling, string manipulations, inbuilt string functions. So we covered all of those things. Then in day three, we learned about keywords as well as variables. We learned about different keywords that are available in Python, specifically used by DevOps engineers. We learned what is a variable, how variables are used, global scoped, local scoped, best practices in defining variable names. And today is day four, where we will learn one of the most important concepts, functions, modules, and packages. We will compare functions with modules and packages understand the differences between functions, modules, and packages. We will try out some examples. And finally, I will also explain you the real time use case that is using virtual environments because in real time in your organization, you work with a lot of other colleagues who are working on different projects. So you use a virtual environment concept in Python. So we will try to understand what exactly it is. It is also called as Python workspaces. So along with functions, modules, and packages, we will also learn about Python workspaces or virtual environments. Okay. I think we can get started and let's start with understanding what exactly is a function in Python and what are the use cases of it. So like every time let's start understanding with an example. So let's say you are given a task to write a Python program. And the Python program is, so if someone gives you two variables or if someone gives you two numbers, let's say, so they'll give two input numbers, two and three, and you need to write a Python program. And the output of the Python program has to be, right? The output has to be add or addition is equals to five, right? Subtraction is equals to minus one multiplication is equals to six division is equals to two by three you know it comes to 0 0.666 something so let's say it has to be two by three so input is given by the user as two comma three to your python program right you can also hard code it in the python program for now because you don't know the concept of environment variables or command line arguments yet so let's say some of user gives you this input and this has to be our output, right? You have to print all of this that I've shown on the screen. So now what you will do with the knowledge that you have at this point of time from last three episodes, what you have learned. So you will say first a is equals to two B is equals to three or number one is equals to two. Number two is equals to three. And you will just start writing saying that add is equals to a plus B print add, right? Subtraction is equals to a minus B print subtraction. Similarly, multiplication and division. So this is how you'll write the program, right? But the problem with this is this is not readable, right? Because you are writing everything in lines, right? Let's say if this program goes to thousand lines, right? Or if this program goes to 10,000 lines. So you know, this is just a calculator function that I've given as an example. But when you write larger programs, the problem with writing in this format is they are less readable. Okay. And also, you know, because you are writing everything as line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, you know, this program is not modular or reusable. I'll explain why and how. Okay. So just keep these two points in mind. What I said is this program is less readable 
and this is not modular or reusable. I'll tell you why. Instead of writing the program like this, you know, if you understand the program, what this program is doing, it is basically performing four functionalities. Functionality number one is addition, right? Functionality number two is subtraction. Functionality number three is multiplication. And functionality number four is division. So basically, the program that you are asked to write has four functionalities. So in general, when you find this kind of use cases, it is better to write a function in Python for each functionality. What does that mean? So instead of writing the program like this, what you can do is you can say a is equals to two, b is equals to three, and then this is the syntax of writing functions in Python, where you can say def add colon. You know, you need to give some spaces here and say a plus b, and then you can say print. If a plus b, let's say you are defining c is equals to a plus b or add is equals to a plus b, then you can say print add or addition. Then you can again write a different function saying def sub a minus b. And then you can again write here print sub, right? If you declare sub is equals to a minus b. Similarly, def multiplication and def division. Okay. So let's try to write this program in a Visual Studio code and see the difference between writing in this way and writing in this way. Then I'll come back and explain you what are the advantages of writing in this format, right? So we will take a Visual Studio code. We are using code spaces. So you can also use code spaces or you can use your virtual environment. Sorry, Visual Studio code on your laptop. Perfect. So it will just take a minute to start up. We'll wait. Setting up remote configuration, connection, connecting to code spaces. Perfect. So if you don't know how to use code spaces, please watch my previous episode or just watch episode number one, where I've explained how to use code spaces. Perfect. Now, so code spaces, why we use is because it has very minimalistic configuration. You just need a GitHub account and you will get your Python already installed in it. So my Python is already installed. Let's go and uh, you know create a file inside the day four folder. Let's call it as calculator.py, right? And inside this, let's say in the format, this is the first format and this is the second format. So in the first format, how would you write the program? You will just say number one is equals to two. Number two is equals to, or let's say number one is equals to 10. Number two is equals to five. And then you will start writing, you know, addition is equals to num one plus num two, right? And then you will say print addition, right? Then you will say sub is equals to num one minus num two, right? And then you will say print sub. So this is what we know till now, right? Because till now we did not learn about the concept of uh, functions or packages in Python. So this is how we will start writing. And then you will say you will write mul multiplication is equals to num1 star num2. Okay, let's restrict this to addition, subtraction, and multiplication so that we don't have to keep writing. Perfect. So this is how you will write. And obviously, if you execute this program, print. Let's uh, switch the directory to day four. CD day zero four. Right. Uh, don't worry about this uh, blue color lines that you see. That is because of uh, the linter that I have. And now Python calculator dot pi. Of course, you will see this output, right? And if you want to make it more readable, you can say that. You know, addition, you, you have learned about string concatenation. So what you can do is you can just say this way, right? Value of 
addition you can just say this right and what would happen if you write this when i try to print it again oh sorry so what you need to do is because this is an integer right so you can just say str of this so in string concatenation you can only concatenate one string with the other string because this is a number right 10 plus 5 is 15 and 15 is a number and this is a string so python is saying it is giving an error that you cannot concatenate a string with an integer so i have just converted the string to the integer and if i try to do you will get value of addition 15 so you can just say this perfect and similarly you can also write value of subtraction value of multiplication right i hope you will uh, do that so you can write that instead of wasting time i'll move to the next one so this is format one of writing the code now let's say i'll create one more file here called calculator new dot pi okay and here i will write using the function approach so what i will do here is i'll just say mem 1 is equals to 10 mem 2 is equals to 5 and here i'll define a function for addition i'll say definition addition whenever you are writing a function okay what you need to do is you need to just write the name of the function so this is the syntax or the keyword right we discussed about keywords and i told you that whenever we learn some concept we will learn about keywords so for python to understand that you are writing a function you have to start that particular line using this keyword called def def or in shortcut it is actually the full name is definition but in shortcut, you write it as def. You cannot write definition. You have to write it as def only because this is the keyword. Python only understands def. And when you write def, it will understand, okay, so this guy is going to write a definition or a function. And name of the function followed by open close brackets. I'll tell you why open close brackets. And after that, click on the enter button because you are all using Visual Studio Code. You will see that when you click on the enter, these spaces are automatically inserted and you will start writing from here okay add is equals to nem1 plus nem2 why is that why did python insert spaces because for different programming languages there is different way of defining you know what is the logic inside the functions right so some programming languages use this format where when the logic of the function is started you know you will start with an open bracket and then you will end the function with a close bracket and inside that you will start writing the logic for example java or go language this is how you will write but in python what you would do is you will start the function with a colon which indicates that the function is started and the logic inside the function you have to write with spaces right i'll show you now what i'll do is i'll just say print add right and now if i want to end the function now you have to go back okay so obviously when you click on the enter button the uh, visual studio code right it will take you to the next page with the spaces because it is assuming that you will continue to write the function but my logic for the function is ended here right this is the logic for my function so what i'll do is i'll just click on the backspace or click on the delete button right and then i'll click on one more enter and i'll start writing my next function so here i'll say sub and here i can say s is equals to nem1 minus nem2 and i'll just click print sub got it so why did i do this because again i'm writing a new function called subtraction which is in shortcut, I just called it as sub. And I started with a keyword called def. I wrote sub, open close brackets, right? You need to use the same brackets. You cannot use any other brackets. Then start your function using colon, right? And after that, click on the enter button. You will automatically redirect it with the spaces. If you are writing this in notepad, this will not happen. 
only if you are using an IDE with Python extension installed, you will automatically get this spaces. If not, you have to give it manually. Okay. Let's say your Python extension is not installed or for some reason it is not working. What you need to do is you need to give this spaces. Now, is there any limitation on the number of spaces? Abhishek, should I give one space, two space, three space? No. You can give any number of spaces, but you have to make sure if you are giving four spaces in this line or if you are giving one tab in this line, for the next line also, you need to give the same number of spaces. You cannot do something like this. Okay. So this is a wrong indentation and Python will not accept this line and it will throw an error. See, it said indentation error. So you have to keep everything with the same number of spaces. Perfect. Now I'll write one more function called mul. And here I'll say m is equals to a multiplied by b. Sorry. Nem1 multiplied by nem2. Now, everyone should practice this because, you know, you might feel that this is very easy, but the syntaxing you will remember only as you keep writing. Okay. As I told you, programming is something you can master only as you keep writing. Don't worry. In the next class, I'll get rid of these uh, things. I'll just remove the uh, plugin, uh, the pilot plugin. I'm keeping it because I'm, uh, you know, I'm preparing notes for some future class. And for that, in this code spaces environment, I have to have this. So in the next class, I'll get rid of this. You don't have to worry. Perfect. Now, okay, I need to say M here and S here because this is S and this is M. Now, let's say you will just end the program here and you will try to execute the Python program. You will see that there will not be any output. Okay, let me execute and see and show you. Hmm. Terminal. Okay, let's run this program called Python calculator. Okay. First CD day four. Then I'll say Python. So in your uh, laptop, probably when you have installed Python, you might uh, run Python using this command called Python three, or in some laptops, you might uh, see it as Python only. It doesn't matter. Okay. So basically in this code spaces environment, there is a alias in shell scripting. There is a concept called alias, right? So this Python alias is set to Python three. That's why you can execute it as Python or you can also execute it as Python three. There will not be any difference. Got it. So I'll just say Python calculator hyphen new dot pi and see there is no output at all. Now you might be wondering why is this happening? So the reason is that whenever you write some functions, you have to explicitly invoke the functions. That means you have to call these functions saying addition, open close brackets, subtraction, open close brackets. So I, you need to call with the function names. Okay. Mul open close brackets. If you don't, you know, if you don't invoke the functions like this, Python will not understand like, you know, Python will start reading all of these lines and it will directly ex exit the program. Only if you invoke the functions, then Python will understand. Okay. You know, I have to go and run the commands inside the function. If you don't give subtraction, let's see, I'll not give subtraction. Now, what would be the output be is if I just run this program, you will see 15 and 50. That is you just saw output of addition as well of multiplication, but not subtraction. Now, if you invoke the subtraction function only, you will see the output for subtraction. See, now you can see three outputs. Perfect. So what is the reason? So you have to explicitly invoke the functions. Now, people who are aware of other programming languages. So in other programming languages, basically, there is a entry point or, you know, there is a place where the execution of the program starts, which is called as a main function, right? So people, if you are coming from Java or, uh, you know, Golang or any other programming languages, you might be used to this main function and program execution starts from the main function. In Python, this is not mandatory. 
let's say here i wrote this file right here i don't have to write the main function so in python the execution if you are not writing the main function you know it can start directly from line number 1 and we will discuss about the main function uh, and we will talk about you know how to write this main function if you want to write all of these things in future classes don't worry about it at this point of time when we go with examples or you know once you all practice this thing in tomorrow's class i'll use the main function and then you will understand the difference oh okay uh, if i use the main function then this is how it works but for now don't worry about it some people might get a question in python is there no main function so i'm just trying to explain for now practice this particular thing so what is the advantage of this now we will compare both of these files okay so here what i did is you know i just wrote everything as a linear code right i just kept on writing line number 1 line number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and if there are 1000 lines i'll keep writing all of these 1000 lines okay but if you are seeing this particular thing there is a proper modular and proper structure for this code at this point of time we are just writing a simple calculator functions function so you might feel that okay this is also better but when this code goes to 1000 lines or 10000 lines it is very difficult to troubleshoot this file or it is very hard to debug this particular file and understand where exactly the error is whereas if you are writing code in this particular way what happens is if there is a flaw in the addition logic you know that this is the function that you have to look at and this code is much more readable when compared to this one so that's why what i tell you is using functions you get advantage number 1 is readability of the code so let's say in your uh, company when you are writing a python function of 1000 lines and you have modified something in the line and you sent this python program for the code review with your colleague okay now if you are not using functions for your colleague it is very difficult to read the file and understand what this code change is and how is it related to the issue that you are fixing if the issue is in addition functionality and if you send your code changes to the uh, person who is reviewing the code then if you are using the function approach that person will understand okay i just have to review the addition function and make sure the tests are passing so using functions you will get the readability second thing is reusability which is also called as modularity some people also call it as modularity or writing code in modules we saw in terraform also right modularity so what is reusability now if you write code in this way what happens is let's say there is other person in your company who wants to use this particular function you know they also want to write the addition functionality only now instead of writing the additional function addition functionality they can just use your function it is not like they will come here and copy paste your code of course they can do that the other thing is when we cover the modules concept you will understand that they can just call this uh, module name followed by the function and they can use it okay so in couple of minutes we'll move towards modules where you will understand that in a better way but for now understand that if you are writing code in the function approach you will get the reusability either they can come here and just copy this code and write it in their programs that is also fine if you are writing in this way it will be difficult for them to understand which code to copy or if they are if you are following the modular approach then they can invoke your function in their code as well right so reusability is the second thing that you get and the third thing is debugging if you get any errors right let's say this is your actual program that your company is delivering to the customers for example and here what happens is customer says that oh hey, multiplication and division are working super awesome but addition functionality is not working now if you go in this particular approach and if this program has 1000 files you just have to start reading from line 1 line 2 line 3 and then somewhere in line 500 600 you will find the logic for addition after couple of hours you will start 
modifying it and finally you will find the issue whereas if you are writing in the functions or the modular approach debugging is super easy because you already know which part of your code is not working right here you already know that this definition or this function is not working so you can come here and you can modify it perfect so what is the take back from this functions concept that i have explained you one the take back is that sorry take back is when you write code in the functions you get three advantages one is reusability of course this entire notes is also available on the github page like every concept i upload the notes to the github repository this is a github repository you can just go to the day folder and you can search for it if you go to day 4 you will find readme file and inside the readme file the content is available whatever i am explaining is available here then the second advantage first is reusability and the second thing that you get is readability as i explained you right code is more readable third advantage is debugging so you also get to debug your program very easily so these are the advantages now advantages is one thing but you should know how to write the functions right for that what you need to remember is to start writing a function you will use a keyword called def so whenever in python you are starting a particular line if you are starting with a keyword called def that means python interpreter will understand that okay this is a definition or a function in python so after def what you need to do you need to start writing the name of the function if the function is addition so just write def addition open a bracket close a bracket you need to use this brackets only then you know your function definition is declared now to start writing the code inside the function start with colon okay and then what you need to do is the entire logic in this particular function you have to define that okay i want to give two spaces three spaces four spaces five spaces any number of spaces but what i would recommend is give three spaces or use the tab button right in your laptop there is a tab button right so either click on the tab button which will automatically come up with three spaces or four spaces or if you want to manually give give the three spaces if you are using any visual studio code or pycharm <coughs> intellij then there will be spaces automatically given as you click on the enter button it will understand that because you have installed a python extension okay i should give some spaces he is writing a function or she is writing a function so the spaces are already given now you will keep writing the logic in the function once the logic is completed what you will do click on the backspace okay so that you know you can start writing your next function right from zero spaces okay so that you don't have to give any spaces so this syntax is very very important and the assignment at this point of time in today's class is you all need to write a calculator function okay as i have explained in the class write a calculator function using functions in python okay and execute the function now let's discuss abhishek but in real time okay because this course is about understanding python from devops engineer point of view give me some use cases of why and how python uh, sorry devops engineers use python functions so we took calculator as a basic example now let's try to convert this into a devops example let's say you are given a task okay to create s3 bucket ec2 instance okay uh, let's say only two things okay one is s3 bucket and one is ec2 instance so what you can do is instead of writing this entire thing in a python file line by line you know what you can do is you can write this using the function approach so you will say definition s3 colon right and inside that you will write the logic for s3 
okay we will use a module called boto3 for that when we move to the module concept you will understand what exactly is a module okay and you know you will uh, talk to the aws api and you will write the enter logic then you will write another definition called ec2 and inside that you will just write the entire logic of course here you might get question you might get a question but abhishek i can do it using terraform also right now you let's say that this is a script that you want to write for yourself okay or this is a script that you know you uh, want to have it as a quick hands on in your laptop okay this is not something uh, that you know you want to share with multiple people or let's say your organization is not using terraform because of some drawbacks in it there are so many drawbacks in terraform right and your organization is basically using aws sdk or aws cdk in such cases you need to write the code in python only right there are multiple options to create resources in aws one is you can use terraform you can use cloud formation templates but there are companies who use aws sdk and cdk also right because there are many drawbacks in terraform and you know cft if you want to move from one platform to other platform so that's why people will also write these things in python and this is one example other example is like i told you in previous class let's say you want to list out issues and pull requests in a repository again what you can do is you can write one function for issues one function for pull requests or you want to create a jira ticket now using python instead of logging to jira you want to create a jira ticket for that you can write a definition right so devops engineers use definitions in a day to day life i'm calling it as definitions because i'm just used to it so you can also call it as a function both are same there is no difference in some programming languages you call them as definitions in some programming languages you call them as functions right because i work with different programming languages sometimes my uh, convention gets changed don't worry about that so definition and you can call or function devops engineers use for achieving such type of activities or tasks got it so i hope everybody will perform this assignment now let's move to the next concept that is modules now as we discussed about functions what exactly is a module i think the name itself says most of it it is a module in devops world you will listen this term called modular approach a lot of times when you are learning ansible when you are learning terraform we learned about modular approach what exactly a module means module means if you are writing a piece of code okay let's say for project 1 you are writing a piece of code and you feel that this piece of code can be used by project 2 project 3 because devops engineers works with a lot of projects right or works with different teams so let's say you wrote the logic for creating ec2 instance with python got it or creating a jira ticket jira ticket is a best example let's say you wrote a logic for creating a jira ticket in project 1 dashboard the same code just by modifying some variables can be used by project 2 and project 3 also right now why should you write the same piece of code for project 1 project 2 project 3 and project 100 instead what you can do is you can write one python file or one python dot py file okay and inside this python dot py file you will have a lot of functions right what you can do is you can use this dot py file as a module if someone needs all of the functions inside this module they can use all of the functions let's say if they need only in this particular python file let's say there is jira creation get jira tickets okay then there is get jira ticket comments for example there are functions like this and everything you wrote in one particular python file you created a module creating module is just nothing i'll tell you let's say you created a module and now what is the advantage of the module is if project 1 needs the entire logic that you have written they can consume the entire module if project 2 only needs one function or one definition 
from this entire module they can use part of the module okay similarly project 3 project 4 project 5 the advantage of using modules is reusability okay i told the same thing with functions also right functions are also reusable that is because a module is equals to group of functions remember this what is a module module is a group of functions that means <coughs> here this is a program that i have written this is a function this is a function and this is a function right and if this particular program can be used by other teams then this entire thing is called as a module right module is nothing but a group of functions along with the variables whatever you would like to consider but in a high level definition modules is nothing but a group of functions now if you ask me abhishek can i call this particular dot py file as a module the answer is yes you can definitely call this dot py file as a module because this is collection of functions tomorrow if someone wants to use this they can use it right got it so what they will do is let's say there is another team writing um, let's call it as advanced calculator okay so always try to use underscore advanced calc dot py okay so so let's say the advanced calculator program consists of addition subtraction multiplication and along with that uh, they have another uh, things like percentile right or different kinds of uh, capabilities in their calculator but they remember that okay there is a project which is already uh, you know which already built a program that has addition subtraction and multiplication so why can't you why can't we reuse their logic right so what they will do is they will just come back right and tell that okay they have already written it so let's use their particular code or let's use their program so when you reuse their program what you will do is they will, you will import that particular thing as a module okay so by default anyone can use this particular thing because this is nothing but a collection of functions that is this is nothing but a module already and to use the module for a different project what you need to do is you will use another keyword see here we came across another keyword and this keyword is called as import okay and this particular file can be anywhere right you just have to provide the proper path because it is already there in the same way same place so what i'll do import calculator underscore new which is the name of the function sorry name of the program and try to use underscore only because if you are using something else then uh, the import will fail and here what you need to do is you just need to call the module in my case it is nothing but calculator new so you can import this module as any particular thing you can give alias also where you can say import calculator new as basic underscore calc for example okay and here you need to call basic underscore calc got it so now let's try to execute and see what will happen python advance calc.py see the output is 15510 you did not pass any variables you did not do anything but why is the output like that that is because you have imported this python program as a module in your advance calculator so you will do this lot of times as a devops engineer you will write same code for different projects so you will use the modular approach right you should also practice this one in today's video after today's video you also have to practice this one and let's say instead of this entire thing okay in the advanced calculator let's say i don't need subtraction and multiplication so what you can do is basically you can call it as basic calc dot addition open close bracket that means you are invoking only the addition functionality from the calculator new of course when you execute this you will see four uh, different outputs the last one is the one that you have triggered here now you might ask me but abhishek why did i get the other three that is because 
you know you are invoking it here and you are using a print statement don't worry uh, we will learn more about the modules then you will understand much ahead so what we usually do is instead of the print statements in real time we use the written statements which we'll talk about don't worry right so for now if you want to invoke a particular function this is the syntax that you will use got it so you understood about modules why we use modules modules is used for reusability and any python program is by default a module right it is nothing but collection of functions so let me ask couple of questions here so can you use the complete program that is can you use all the functions directly yes to use all the functions directly what you will do you can just do this one sorry this that is you are importing the module and you are executing it can i use only one particular function yes how you can just say calculator dot addition right or what you can also do is you can import only one particular function from the module as well which we'll learn later don't worry if in one class we will try to learn everything then we will keep forgetting the things that's why of course the syntax is very very simple you can use the from statement and do it but i don't want to complicate things here so just remember these things and try to practice till now what i have explained now there is another concept that i wanted to explain in functions itself before we move to the next thing right one last concept that you have to learn in functions is functions take inputs and returns output okay so usually within the function of course you can use the print statements like i have used here you can use the print statements but basically the primary responsibility of a function is take an input perform the required logic right and finally return the output that means if you want to write and if you want to use functions efficiently instead of doing this what you need to do is pass input to the function where you know you will say that okay for now you know you can consider number 1 number 2 here itself but usually what you can do is just call it here for easy reference okay let's keep it here and you can pass these values here also number 1 comma number 2 right or for simplicity what you can also do is just get rid of this addition 5 comma 10 you can also do this and here you need to read the values as inputs in the function that means call them as nem1 comma nem2 got it and i did not change anything much but what i have done is i am passing these values as input to the function and instead of printing it here what i'll do is return add got it and it's up to the executor how they want to print the values so you can do something like x is equals to addition 5 10 and do print of x right or you can also call this inside the print statement where you can say oops what did i do yeah where you can say print addition right here i can say print inside the print statement i can call the function so you can call the functions inside the print statement also and here again you can pass 10 comma 5 and when you are passing these values what you need to do is you need to give them as input to the function so you have to define them here nem1 comma nem2 again here nem1 comma nem2 print multiplication nem1 comma nem2 
now why we need to write programs in this way and why is this better than the previous approach because this will increase the modularity of your program sorry here let's say 10 comma 5 or this will increase the reusability of your program so here previously we hard coded values inside the function right now if anyone else wants to use your function they cannot use it because you have hard coded values as 5 plus 10 addition is not only about 5 plus 10 right it can be different different values so that's why what we need to do is whenever you are writing a function make sure to follow this particular logic function takes input performs the required logic returns the output so that's what i did here okay return sub s and here return mul so we are learning about another keyword now that is the return now what does return do return will return the value of this particular thing and it will replace here okay so program is getting executed here right so what return will do is it will replace this value with 15 okay let's say if you are instead of calling the function in, in the print statement itself you can also do this right x is equals to addition of 5 comma 10 now what will happen when you give this return statement you know once this program is executed this entire logic is implemented and return statement will change this output to 15 and x will be assigned with 15 now if you are doing it directly in this way what would happen is the print statement will directly print the value as 15 let's try to see i might do some syntax mistakes also right uh, not advanced calculator right we are modifying the basic calculator so calculator new dot pi perfect i did not do any mistake that's fine so one thing to remember is uh, i work with python and go language so sometimes i might do some syntax related issues so that's totally fine what i'll do is whenever i do mistakes i'll correct it right so that you people also will learn but just wanted to tell you that perfect so this is how you write the programs in a better way compared to the previous one using return statements and taking inputs so a program or a function takes input perform the required logic and returns the output so your assignment number 3 is to write calculator function using definition using the inputs and using the return keyword that's it these are your assignments for today now i'll move to the topic called packages packages i'll close it very simply right so packages is nothing but collection of modules okay now what did i say initially i talked about function right i told function is nothing but a basic piece of logic that you can reuse and then i told modules is nothing but collection of functions right that means the program that we just wrote is a module now i am talking about packages which is nothing but collection of modules which means in your organization for a project let's say if you are writing five python files okay if the logic requires five python files which is basically the applications right so devops engineers use modules more functions more packages you know we will consume the packages but we don't write packages as much as developers write okay mostly we will work with modules and functions of course we will use packages also but we are more at the consumer end right very less at the writing end so now packages is nothing but collection of modules so if your code is written in multiple python files what you can do is you can bundle all of these files into a package similar to what developers do right let's say developer is writing uh, a code for amazon.com so the entire logic for amazon.com is not written in one particular file it is written in multiple microservices and in each microservice you have thousands of java code or thousands of golang code or thousands of python code also by i mean python files so this collection of python files for one microservice is called as a package 
some people call it as package some people call it as library right that's totally fine you can call it as a package or you can also call it as a library now as a devops engineer in a day to day life we use a lot of packages okay why is that or we use a lot of modules why is that right both packages and modules we use a lot of them the reason is that you know the task that we try to do let's say you want to make a api request to aws or api request to github api request to jira there are people who have already written the entire code for this okay just like i wrote the entire code for the basic calculator and this guy who is writing the advanced calculator is using my code right of course when you know using the code this person can pass different parameters right or when using the code this person might add additional capability capabilities to it but this guy is using my uh, python module that i have written similarly the modules for talking to the aws api github api jira api or talking making any http requests on the internet all of these modules are already available and this modules for example for aws i know that we use a module called boto3 for jira i know that we use a module called jira right for github we use a module called github for http requests we use a module called requests right and we will use all of these modules don't worry about that but how do i know all of these modules are already available because of day to day practice another thing but here abhishek when you wrote the basic calculator i know my module is here so i am directly using it but where are the modules for all of these things so just like when you are writing a docker file and when you are creating a docker image right and you know that this docker image can be used by other people in your company what you will do you will push this docker image to docker hub or any of your docker registry right similarly in python when you know that you are writing a module so there is a person who wrote a module for aws right and this person called the module as boto3 and he knows that okay this module is going to be popular everyone is going to use it so what this person did is he pushed this module to a python i can call it as artifactory i can call it as a python hub just like docker hub or i can call it anything but in python world it is called it as it is called as pypi right which is nothing but python package index okay so you can search this over the internet it's very simple to get pypi right python package index and here you just have to search just like how you search for docker hub in docker hub let's say you want to search for nginx image you will come and search for nginx right similarly if i want aws api okay just come and search for aws okay so here you will file all the aws related modules and if you know the module is called boto3 you can directly search for boto3 and you can click on this button you will get the commands to install so you might be seeing this for the first time called pip which is called as pip now what does that mean okay when you are dealing with docker right you want to download any other's docker image how do you download you use the docker cli right and you will call something like docker pull image name the complete path of the image right similarly in python you have something similar to docker cli which is called as pip right it is called as pip pip is called as pip and using pip you can install anything that is available in the pypi right understand very carefully pip is similar to docker cli that is used to download from docker hub similarly using pip you can download anything from pypi all that you need to do is say pip install boto3 if you want to install boto3 
Jira if you want to install Jira, right? GitHub if you want to install GitHub. Anything. So just come here in the PYPI, search for Jira. If there is something related to Jira, you'll get it, right? There is something related to Jira. If there is something related to GitHub, you will get it. And you can also read about them, right? It's not just, you know, you found something called Boto3, but you don't know how to use it. There is complete project description. It says Boto3 is AWS SDK for Python, which allows Python developers to write software that makes use of AWS services like S3 and EC2. So basically you can create S3, read S3, anything that is related to AWS. Perfect. So pip is your point of reference for downloading anything from the PYPI and all of these called as PYPI modules and packages. And who contributes these modules and packages? Open source, right? Who contributes images to Docker Hub? Open source. Anyone can contribute. Similarly, to PYPI, also anyone can contribute. Even you can contribute, right? So there are some millions of modules in PYPI as of today. And you can use all of those modules without any condition, completely free. I'll tell you how to use these modules, right? Don't worry about that. You, you might be thinking that Abhishek, from the calculator, I understood how to use it. But how to use Boto3, how to use Jira, how to use GitHub, I don't know. Don't worry. We will learn all of them in future classes. Here, there are some examples also, right? The documentation provides very clear examples. Here, there is example to read all the S3 buckets. It said import Boto3. S3 is equals to Boto3 something for bucket and you'll get all the buckets in your AWS account and how to use each and every step is present. I'll teach you. Don't worry about that. All of these things we will learn throughout this course. We will learn the packages and modules used by DevOps engineers. Don't worry about that. So what are some of the popular packages? There are again millions of packages in Python that uh, people use like NumPy, Pandas, right? So many things are available, but we will learn only from DevOps point of view. Modules also we will run from DevOps point of view. Got it? So take your Python terminal, right? And you can execute pip install Boto3 and you will see Boto3 will get installed. Okay? You can install pip install GitHub. You will see GitHub will be installed. So using pip, you can install any module. There are no conditions. Again, I am trying to explain you. But what is important is how to see what all packages are installed on my machine. So you can just run pip list. And you'll see all the modules that are available or all the packages that are available on this machine. Right? Basically, pip will give you a list of packages. So packages and modules are mostly related because in real world, you will not have a single Python file, right? In real world, you will have multiple Python files for the logic that you are writing. So mostly these are bundled into a package and shipped as a package. And inside package, you have modules. Inside modules, you have functions. So when I call packages, indirectly, that means to say that we are using modules. We will learn this in detail when we take more and more examples. You will get used to it, right? This is very, very simple concept. You don't have to worry. Now, similar to Docker LS, you have pip list and using pip list, you will find all the packages that are installed. Some of these packages are already installed. They come by default. Don't worry. You might be thinking, oh, I did not install all of them. Yeah, some of them comes by default. No worries. Okay. Now, I will move to the final concept. Oh, before that, uh, if in your machine, pip is not installed. In If you are using code spaces, pip is installed by default. If not, go to the browser and search for install pip for Python. And depending upon your architecture, you can install it. There are curl commands to install, right? Just say install pip. And you'll get this folder depending upon your architecture. Choose the script. If it is Linux, use this. If it is Mac OS, use this. If it is Windows, use this. Okay. Some machines pip will not be installed. You have to install by yourself. Now. I'll move to the final concept for today. I know this is good. This is a lengthy video, 
you people might be thinking oh abhishek today's class is so big but it is important right the final concept is virtual environment if this is going over your head don't worry watch this video one more time or you know just try to understand as much as possible as we keep doing it you will learn things much better so virtual environment i'll close in just 2 minutes so virtual environment is nothing but see sometimes as a devops engineer we use the common machine right we all use a common virtual machine for multiple projects okay and what happens is project 1 let's say they want jira module but they want jira module of version 1.2.3 and project 2 also is using jira right even in their python programs that you write for them you know they have jira request but they want jira of version 1.5.6 if you use this version they will not accept if you use this version they will not accept that means their requirements are not met with this particular version and these people requirements are not met met with this particular uh, project right so this code will fail if you use this version of jira and this code will fail if you use this version of jira now how do you solve this machine is same if you say pip install jira is equals to is equals to 1.2.3 this version will get installed these people are happy about it if you say pip install jira is equals to 1.5.6 this will work and these people are happy about it but how will you satisfy all of them for that particular reason there is a concept in python called as virtual environment now this is only useful if you are using same machine for different projects and usually you do that okay as a devops engineer you don't create 100 ec2 instances if you have 100 different projects right what is the use of it you can write all your python programs push them to github repository and you can clone those python projects onto an ec2 instance and execute from there right but how will you solve this problem that i have explained here so there is concept called virtual environment and what virtual environment does is the name itself says virtual right so it will do a logical separation it will not do a real separation but it will do a logical separation on your virtual machine for the python packages that means if this is the machine that has python installed okay what virtual environment will do is if you create a virtual environment for project 1 then it will try to create a virtual space where all the packages that you install will be available in this particular space only okay so inside the machine once you log into this machine using a command you can switch to this virtual environment for each of the project you can create virtual environment ssh to this machine switch to the virtual environment depending upon project 1 project 2 project 3 project 4 switch to the required virtual environment and install the required packages and execute the program for here so that everybody will be satisfied i'll show you how so first you need to install the virtual environment uh, tool so to install virtual environment tool just say pip pip install v e n b okay mm sorry just say virtual env i think yeah so just say virtual env perfect now what i will do is let's say i'm working on a project for project team uh, abc okay so what i will do is python minus m v e n v this is the common uh, uh, command you don't have to you know change this command for different different things so you just remember this python minus m that means you are calling a module called v e n v and then you can say um abc or project abc now what will happen is there will be a folder created for project abc okay 
if you do ls minus ltr you will see a folder called project abc similarly if there is another project called xyz python minus m v e n v project hyphen x y z okay now what happens is if you want to work for the project abc just use this command ssh to this machine once you create the virtual environments you will run this command called source project abc slash bin slash activate now see before i am viramalla now it is saying in the brackets that you are working for project abc and let's say if i create a package here okay so let's say if i am importing pip install jira so jira is installed in this particular virtual environment but jira will not be installed in the virtual environment xyz so there will not be any conflict between your packages and the packages for project xyz right so you can write any python program here that is using jira any version of jira so you can use jira 1 2 3 here jira 4 5z there right if you see here pip list pipe grep jira you will see that jira is installed perfect and you will see the version of jira is 3.5.2 to move out of this virtual environment just say deactivate and you will come out of this virtual environment work for that particular project execute their programs come out of their virtual environment if you want to install packages for them go to the virtual environment install the packages come out of that now go to source project xyz bin slash activate right here try to say pip list pipe grep jira see there is no output it says that there is no jira package i don't know anything about jira and here you can install any version of jira okay that will not be available in that thing so what i am doing is in the same machine i can create this logical separation using the concept of virtual environments and devops engineers use the concept of virtual environment a lot compared to developers because the reason is that we work with multiple development teams and each development team might have different requirements someone might say use boto3 this version because of their requirements other version will not work so this is the thing i hope today's concepts are very clear and to make it even clear you need to practice if you did not understand something or if you are finding something difficult don't worry either keep practicing it or wait for the next classes where i'll keep using these concepts so that you will get familiar to it one thing don't give up if you give up you will not learn python keep practicing wait for the next sessions if something is not clear ask me in the comment section or you will get it cleared in the next classes thank you so much see you all bye bye